consider the equation and substitute Vc equal to 0 in that equation, Ic equal to minus 1 by Rc into Vce plus Vcc by Rc. If I put Vc equal to 0 in this, then Ic is given by Vcc by Rc. Let's consider this point as A point on the output characteristics curve shown over here that is IC versus a VCE plot. Let's consider the same equation again that is IC equal to minus 1 by RC into VCE plus VCC by RC. Now if I put IC equal to 0 in this equation, I can get over here VCE equal to VCC that is now a second point called as a B point which has to be placed on the output characteristics curve of the common emitter configuration. Now there are two points which are available over here on the output characteristics of the common emitter configuration. One is point A and one is point B. If I join these two lines with a straight line that is called as a DC load line joining the two points A and B together. Now let's start with the concept of quotient point. Quotient point is called as a steel point, inactive point or a stable point and it is also called as operating point or a biasing point. It is a point on a DC load line which represents the collector current which is flowing through the circuit and the collector to emitter voltage which is across the transistor collector to emitter terminal. DC load line is actually a set of infinite number of Q points. But now to operate the transistor in three different regions there are infinite number of Q points. If the Q point is towards the VC section that is called as the Q point nearer to the cutoff. If the Q point is at the middle of a DC load line, then that is called as the active region Q point. But if the Q point is towards the IC section, then that is called as the saturation region Q point. So depending upon the application, either you want the transistor to act like an open switch in the cutoff, then the Q point must be towards VCE. If you want the transistor to act like a closed switch, then the Q point must be towards the IC section. And if you want the transistor to act like an amplifier, then at that time the Q point must be at the center. The next point of discussion is factors affecting the stability of the Q point. So let's first understand what do you mean by the stability of the Q point is affected. If suppose the Q point is stabilized on a DC load line which is on the output characteristics curve with the help of A and B point, then at that time if there is change in the input signal and the output signal will cause us the Q point to shift towards the cutoff region or towards the saturation region, then at that time that is called as the stability of the Q point is affected. Now there are three parameters which will be affecting the stability of the Q point. The first parameter is the temperature, the second parameter is beta DC that is called as current gain of the transistor and the third one is called as the variation of parameter from one device to the another device. Let's discuss now how the first point that is temperature will affect on the stability of the Q point. So as shown over here, if the temperature increases on the, of the transistor, then the leakage current that is ICBO increases. If there is increase in ICBO, then at that time the collector to emitter current ICEO also increases. That will cause the collector current to increase. So that will producing the heat at the collector junction of the transistor. And if suppose the heat is exceeded beyond the limit, then that will be causing the transistor to burn out. That effect is called as thermal runaway effect, which is very dangerous for the transistor. And that must be avoided, so that excess temperature must be avoided. Now the second point for the discussion is how the beta DC will be changing the stability of the Q point. Beta is nothing but the current gain of the transistor. If we are going to use the transistor, the beta of that transistor is changing from one device to the another device. If the similar type of transistor is used, then also the beta for that is different. Then that will be causing the stability of Q point to move away from the center to the cutoff region or to the saturation region. And the next one is, if suppose we want to avoid the effect of this temperature and beta DC or the change of the parameter on the stability, then at that time we are going for the bias stabilization technique. That is nothing but biasing techniques to avoid the affection of the different parameters on the Q point. Transistor biasing circuit is required to satisfy the following requirements. So the first one is transistor should be properly biased in the active region so that the transistor can act as an amplifier and the transistor should be properly biased in the cutoff or saturation region if we want the transistor to be act like a switch. 
Then the second point is that the Q point position must be provided at the center of a DC load line so that transistor can act like an amplifier. The next one is stability factor must be as small as possible. The fourth point says that negative feedback must be introduced in a transistor to provide here the proper stability of Q point. Next point is temperature variation and device variation must be awarded to obtain a proper stability of Q point. And the last one is a bypass capacitor must be provided in a transistor circuit so that there must be a void in the reduction in voltage gain of a transistor. Let's start with the introduction of bias stabilization. Bias stabilization is a process of stabilizing the Q point of the circuit. So there may be the Q point instability due to temperature. The junction temperature of a transistor is depending upon the collective current flowing through the device. Then the temperature will be affecting the following parameters of the transistor. The first one is the VBE that is the base to emitter voltage. The second one is beta DC that is the current gain of the transistor. And the third one is ICBO that is nothing but the reverse saturation current flowing through the circuit. Let's see now how the temperature will be affecting on the following parameter that is VBE base to emitter voltage, then beta DC current gain of the transistor and ICBO that is the reverse saturation current of a transistor. Let's go first to VBE. If suppose there is a change in the temperature, then at that time VBE decreases at the rate of 2.5 millivolt per degree centigrade. Because of change in VBE, IP changes, that is the base current changes. Then IC changes because IC dependent on IB. So now temperature will be directly affecting on IC. The next point is beta DC. As we have seen already, beta DC is the current gain of the transistor, which is nothing but, which is different for different devices. Then beta DC will be having the relation with IC that is equal to beta DC into IB is nothing but IC. So if there is change in beta DC, that will be affecting on IC. Then the third parameter is ICBO, that is the reverse saturation current flow because of minority charge carrier and it is obviously dependent on the change in the temperature. So now these are the following parameter and it's having the relation with IC is equal to beta DC into IB plus 1 plus beta DC into ICBO. So here you can clearly identify that IC depends mainly on beta DC, that is the current gain, then the base current, which is dependent on the VPE, and then ICBO, this is nothing but the reverse saturation current because of minority charge carrier. Now the effect of these parameters can be defined over here or expressed over here with the mathematical analysis by considering the three parameters or the stability factor. First is S, the second one is S dash, and the third one is S double dash. Now we can see over here, S is nothing but the change in collector current because of the small change in the reverse saturation current. So now in this case, I'm going to keep over here VPE and beta DC, that is the remaining two parameters constant. The next one is S dash, where now there is a change in collector current because of the change in base to emitter voltage. At this time now, the remaining two parameters must be kept constant, that is ICO and beta DC must be kept constant. Now the third stability factor is S double dash, which is nothing but the change in collector current because of the change in current gain of the transistor. During this section, I'm going to keep these two parameter constant. So we can say ICO and next one is del VBE is kept constant. So overall now, IC can be written as S times del ICO then plus S dash times del VBE plus S double dash into del beta DC. Now this is said as a mathematical analysis of the effect of temperature on the collector current IC.